as my son, you do not speak Creole. So I think I have mostly the blame, right? Because I should have taught you Creole. I mean, I still, I still understand it to a certain degree. Yeah. I don't think I need to speak it as much as you guys needed to when you were growing up because you guys grew up in Haiti. So I only have uh, people around me that speak English outside of the household. So there's no real need for me to learn it as much yeah. as you guys need to learn it. But it is something that you will need to at least learn because after all, you are Asian. You yeah. may be born in this country, but by blood, you are going to still be Asian. And then one of the biggest mistakes that I made with you guys, uh, with, within all my travels to Haiti, I never had a chance to take you guys to Haiti. And which is something that I am willing to rectify probably in the next two, three years. But when I wanted to take you really to Haiti, now the situation in Haiti is like, poor piece for me now to take you guys. So mm -hmm. therefore I am waiting probably next year or in two years, things might improve, then I will do the trip with you. Okay, so let's go back to the book. So why that title, Crazy Phone Cars for Knucklehead? Because there's so many cars out there that like, there's a certain car that people attract that are knuckleheads, that are just fun, that you can toss around. You don't have to worry about hitting a bump or a pebble as much as like a Cadillac or a Mercedes because certain people drive these cars, more younger people, younger people who don't really, you know, care too much about gas mileage and things of that nature. That's why I said crazy fun cars for knuckleheads. So I gave the reader a first impression of the type of cars I'll be speaking of. It's not gonna be high-end luxury cars. It's gonna be more muscle sport cars that you know younger people are gonna be attracted to. Okay. It seems that you are into cars that much. Yeah. You love cars? I, yeah, I love cars, yep. I know your first car that you ever owned mm -hmm. it was the Dodge Challenger. Challenger. Yeah. And then this is something that you call as mommy because I was not there when you were buying mm -hmm. it. Because... Yeah. I wasn't there when you were buying it because you knew if I was there, I would have probably put a stop to it because as a father, I know those type of cars for teenagers like you. Mm. You just turned 20, right? Yeah, I just turned 20. And yep. then we bought it for you last year mm -hmm. and then you were 19 at that time. And then mm. you should have known that every time you're on the street, you should see my heart is wasting. As a black man driving an expensive cars like this, it's not that the expensive part of it because mm. they are you were driving your mom, which is a Mercedes-Benz. Mm. So that was not the expensive part. It is the particular, that type of car that you were driving. Mm. I understand, you know, yeah. That is a car that is very hot out there. Mm. And then in fact, what happened to that car? Yeah, it got stolen on my driveway. That's right. Yeah. So how did you feel when that happened? Can you tell me exactly what happened? Because I know I was on my way going to work mm. when our neighbor called me and said, if friends have somebody coming over because she just saw your car pull mm. out of the driveway. His friends is out. And then we call you. It is when you told me that they stole your yeah, car. So, so what happened? Either? So I woke, I pretty much just like woke up. I heard you guys leave in the morning. It was like mm. six in the morning. And then I just heard like a car start up and it was really like loud. So I knew it couldn't be my car. I thought it couldn't be my car because it was like how, who would be driving my car at this time? So I just thought it would be like a neighbor or something. But then I was like, like they started revving the engine, they started pressing on the pedal. So I was like, okay, kind of sounds like my car. When you drive your car enough, you like you know the sound. Mm -hmm. So then I went downstairs to look, and it was just not there from the window. So then I went outside through the door, and I actually looked outside, and then I saw tire skirts on the on the grass, and I was like, okay, somebody took the car. Mm -hmm. At that point, I went back inside, got my clothes on, like all my clothes on, took my mom's car key, and went did like a little lap around the town just to see if I could find anywhere, but they were on the highway by that point. Um, what I was thinking was, um, yeah, it was stolen. I wasn't, I was kind of shocked at first more than really angry or sad because mm -hmm. I wasn't really um, paying for it. It was mostly mommy. So, and it was fully insured. So <laughs> that's why, that's why she was literally paying for everything, even the gas at some point. So that's why I was like, it was just a blessing that I could drive it for those three months. And yeah, okay. I'm just happy that I had it more than, yeah. more than anything. Yeah. So what made you decide to write that book? As you said, it is for knuckleheads. So do you think that it is something people will be interested in? You know, um, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that like 
like me who are searching for a car or not even searching car for a car because when I had my Challenger, mm -hmm. I would still be on cars.com, Auto Trader, just looking at cars and seeing what they were being selling for or whatever because I was just interested in the car market. So I know there's people out there who are interested in the type of cars they can get for certain prices and the horsepower differences and quarter mile time, zero to 60 times and stuff of that nature. So I know there's people out there who are interested in like not high performance cars, but pretty much high performance cars for a certain budget. Okay, for that budget. So you think that people will be buying your book? Uh, I've, it's been sold already a couple of times so far. I've made like a $30. It's not a big book. Like the Usually how it works is the more pages you have in the book, the the more likely it is to sell just because of the um, algorithm uh -huh. on, the, on the Amazon website. So I think I only did this as a test to see if it would sell to see more books down the line because I was like if it doesn't sell I'm probably not going to push for more books but if it even sells one copy then I'm going to make a larger book um, and more more volume in terms okay. of books. So your intention is to write more books? Yes but I'm actually going to What use, about what subjects then? Uh, usually when you put a book out you do like what's it called uh, like a like a genre like the same genre of books it's like you do uh, what's it called I'm trying to think of a word you, when you like put a book out, you want to make sure that the other books you put out are in the same like oh, same line. Yeah, okay. the same, same line. Category. Yeah, okay. same category as what you're doing because you want to build like a brand, a brand. type so of thing. So your brand will be around cars. Around cars, but I can make another book under a separate account or the same one. Uh -huh. It doesn't really matter too much, but I really want to focus on cars because you want to write about things that you enjoy writing so about. So you enjoy cars. Yes, I so enjoy cars. So it seems that you are going to get your next car because we haven't bought you another car because I told mommy, no, nope. uh, based on how you were behaving, so which is a different talk. So definitely let you drive the Jetta. So what is wrong with the Jetta? Nothing's wrong with the Jetta. I'm actually going to probably be driving the Jetta for the next couple of months as I because I got a new job now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be investing into my publishing business. Um, and oh, you take this as a publishing. So you're taking it serious. Oh, I'm taking it serious. The next book is...